Good morning, you class. I hope you're all well today. Uh, so this today, being Wednesday, we are going to be doing a bit of grammar and a bit of writing. Writing that you planned for yesterday. But we're going to start with some grammar. So our objective is to use colons correctly. So I need to explain to you a little bit before you can actually start this task A. So first of all, I need to explain about independent clauses. Well, a clause, just a clause, always has a subject and a verb. But an independent clause has a subject and a verb, and it completes a thought. So it can stand on its own. It's a sentence that can stand on its own. So in our example sentence here, we've got the eagle soared high above us. So that is, uh, has got a subject, the eagle. It's got a verb, sword. It completes a thought. It's a sentence in its own right, and it can stand on its own. Now, we could then expand this sentence and have a subordinate conjunction. Um, for example, while uh, the eagle soared high above us, while the falcon swooped down to earth. That would that second part, including the while, would be a, um, a dependent clause because it can't stand on its own. But really, we don't need to look at that today. We just You just need to be able to identify an independent clause. So why do we need to know about independent clauses? Well, colons only can be put after an independent clause. So let's look at this sentence here. There was only one thing he could do. He could do, I keep saying that wrong. There was only one thing he could now do, escape. So looking at the first part, there was only one thing he could now do. That is a sentence in its own right, isn't it? It's an independent clause. It can stand on its own. So that works. Escape that comes after it, does that relate to the one thing he could do now? Yes, so that sentence works. It is correctly. They've used a colon correctly in that sentence. Let's look at this one. He knew that he had to listen. So let's look at the first part up to the colon. He knew that he had to. Is that an independent clause? Could it stand on its own? Absolutely not. It's hanging, isn't it? It hasn't completed the whole thought. So that cannot be correct. We would need to change that and alter it or take away the colon in order for that to work. Right, let's look at two more examples. We've got a variety of fruits are required to make a fruit salad. Pineapple, strawberries and melon. So a variety of fruits are required to make a fruit salad. If we put a full stop at the end there, would that be a sentence? Can it stand on its own? Yes, so that is right. Pineapple, strawberries and melon, does that ref refer to the variety of fruits? Yes, so that one is correct. The next one says, the pharmacy sold medicine, deodorant and toothpaste. So the pharmacy sold, it, yes it has a subject, this pharmacy, it has a verb, sold, but does it complete a whole entire thought? No, it is again hanging, it cannot stand on its own. So therefore, this sentence is incorrect. We would need to change this. Now, part of your task might ask you to, uh, ask you to identify whether it's correct and then change it to make it correct. So if we had to change this one, we could say the pharmacy sold three products or three items, medicine, deodorant, and toothpaste, and then it works. Okay, so that should help you get on with your grammar task A. You can pause the video now, or if you like, you can carry on listening, and then, um, then do all tasks. So the next part is we're going to get prepare, uh, prepare yourselves to write. So the other learning objective is to vary the tone for effect. And I've already told you that you're going to be writing a wildlife commentary using informal language. 
in the style of Steve Irwin and Steve Back or Steve Backshaw. Um, so I've given you some links on your task for you to go and listen to some of their wildlife commentaries. And while you're listening, you can pick out some of the in, in the informality and think about why they are using those informal terms. Uh, so have a little think about that. I think you might be thinking that they're trying to relate to their audience. So not seem like this expert. Obviously they are experts and they do cover a lot of technical language, but they do it in a really um, relatable way. So let's have a look at the way they do this. They can use exclamations. Obviously they both of these are with snakes. So they will use uh, exclamations like, wow, blimey, hey, hey, hey. He says to the snake, Steve Irwin, ouch, no way. So try and you do that in your commentary as well, using some exclamations. Um, they use colloquial language, which is called slang or non-standard English. So especially to show their accent as well. So Steve Irwin, for example, to show his Australian accent, you might want to change something if you're going to be doing it along an accent line. Um, so we've got gonna, wanna, come here, me mate. Sorry, that sounds English, not Australian. Um, go nuts, looks blue, happy days. Oh, happy days, I've seen my beautiful snake. Uh, so when you're writing your wildlife commentary for the various parts of your plan, um, so you're going to cover things like appearance, diet, um, but you can just ima imagine yourself looking at this creature and interacting with it. And, and you could even practice this orally first, like a little play, and then get it written down, or some people like to write it first. Um, so, I'm giving you an example, a model extract, just an ex extract, it's not the whole thing. So my model example is for the appearance of my creature, which is a mixture of a cat and a rooster and a rhino, not rhino, a cat, a rooster and a squirrel. Um, so here we, I've called it cat, cataquirrel, a cataquirrel. So I hope you can notice some of my informality through colloquialisms I've used through um, exclamations. Core blimey, look at the size of those talons. Catacrils use them for many purposes. And I've used my colon here. Catching their prey, preening their cat-like head and carrying nesting materials. Talk about hand, yeah? Ouch, I wouldn't want to get my eyes scratched out by those devilish claws. They're as sharp as razor blades. So a mixture of the two skills using the informality, the colloquialisms and the exclamations, as well as using a couple of examples of your colons. So good luck and I really um, look forward to seeing your wildlife commentary. Task C is for you to present it in some way. So that might be you doing it for your family or being recorded by somebody. Uh, you could put it into a little video and send it to me. I know uh, some of you did that right at the beginning of our um, virtual lessons. Um, so I think you're going to have great fun with that. And I look forward to all those budding wildlife um, presenters showing me their talents. Thank you and goodbye.